Hello, welcome back. I'm Dr. Catherine Endy, the family life coach. And today I want to talk about the new paradigm of parenting. And it's something you've probably heard me talk about um, before. But the new paradigm of parenting really acknowledges development, children's emotions, children's emotional needs. And what I want to say about this is, let's talk for a second about the old paradigm of parenting. Old paradigm of parenting, the way that most of us were raised, if you are an adult in the 21st century, you're probably raised in this way, that was very adult-centered, meaning that the way most of us were raised prioritized and centered the needs of the adults, not necessarily the needs of the children. That doesn't mean that you were totally neglected or that your you know desires were never considered, but so often when we as children had difficulty, upset, having a hard time, the thing that took precedence was that that was inconvenient for the adults or that that was somehow problematic for the adults. In fact, in a lot of the work that I've done um, on the research side of my career, we, we look at what's called challenging behavior. And we talk in our research about for whom is the behavior a challenge? Because again, in the old paradigm of parenting, we prioritize the fact that the behavior was a challenge for the adult. And that really, end of the day, that's the adult's problem, isn't it? Um, so in the new paradigm of parenting, we acknowledge that the child's needs, wishes, and desires are just as valid and as just as valid and important as the adults. And in some cases more so, right? Because they're vulnerable, they're young, they're developing, they they need our protection and our uh, support, right? And so in this new paradigm of parenting, we're really acknowledging that our children's needs come first. Now that doesn't mean, I mean, there's the whole put the oxygen mask on yourself first before assisting others, et cetera, et cetera, that whole metaphor, that is also true. However, we don't, dismiss a child's upset just because it's inconvenient for us. We don't say too bad for you just because we have something else we'd rather be doing or we don't have can't make time or space for our children. And the truth is that giving children two decades of experiencing what it's like to have their needs and wishes and desires acknowledged and respected and taken into consideration does not mean that you raise an entitled, self-centered egomaniac. And that's something that a lot of parents worry about. If I put my kid first, if I'm always letting them get away with stuff or get their way, are they going to be entitled? Are they going to be self-centered? Are they going to expect to be put first all the time? And the truth is, it's actually just the opposite, because when humans have the experience of being treated with kindness and respect, they know what that feels like, and they are more likely to treat others that way because they know what that feels like, because they, they've they internalized that experience, and then they're able to share that experience, then they're able to give that to others. Children, young children, are inherently egocentric. That is a developmental fact. They are cognitively incapable of taking others' needs into consideration most of the time. So when they seem to be melting down at a time that's inconvenient for you, it's because it's not about you, right? It's not about your needs. It's actually, they are only able to think about themselves. But as adults, hopefully we are not that way. Hopefully we can give people positive experiences help them meet their needs, do something kind, put others before ourselves, because we know on some level what it feels like to receive that kind of care and attention. Maybe you didn't get a lot of that growing up. Maybe you did, but we're not doing this because we demand, you know, not because adults demanded that we be respectful. In other words, we learn on an emotional level on a sensory level, what it feels like to be supported and respected and treated kindly. 
And that's how we learn it. We don't learn it by it being demanded of us before we're developmentally ready to do it. So when we think about kids, you don't teach your child to be respectful and kind by forcing them to do what you say because you're older or by forcing them to say please and thank you or forcing them to apologize. That's not how we learn kindness and respect. We teach children to be respectful and kind by allowing them to experience what it feels like to receive respect and kindness. So this requires us to decenter our own needs some of the time. It requires us to decenter ourselves in some way. And I, I realize that might be controversial. And again, yes, put the oxygen mask on yourself first. And so many of us are recovering from our childhood. So we're having to prioritize ourselves and we're learning to prioritize ourselves. And it's also true that in order for children to learn respect and to learn how to treat others with kindness, they need to know what it feels like to receive that. They need to know what it feels like to be listened to. They need to know what it feels like to have their emotions validated. They need to know what it feels like to have someone just sit with them and feel felt, as Dan Siegel says, to feel that emotional resonance. It's the internalized experience of feeling what that feels like that teaches another person to be respectful, to be kind, to be a good listener. So this is a new way of thinking about things. This is the new paradigm. This is a new way of interacting with children. In the past, respect was demanded because I'm a grown up, you're a kid, you have to respect me. This is a little bit of a different way of thinking about it, recognizing that respect is mutual and that the way children learn to respect others is by feeling respected. So I hope that helps you to think about things a little bit differently. Let me know in the comments if you have questions and see you next time.